What's going on guys? It's your girl Sam Shugs. We're going to continue our brand basics series today and talking about one of the most iconic brands of our generation and time. But before I get into it, two quick things. First and foremost, if you like my videos, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so I know that I'm not wasting my time. Secondly, you can go ahead and follow me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, The Works. If there's a platform for it, I'm probably on it. Just go ahead and search The Sugar Woman. Find me that way when I do post new videos because it is a little bit infrequent. I'm currently working on my scheduling to make that a little bit more consistent. Then you'll be in the know as to when I post, you know, videos about some of your favorite brands that you've been wanting to learn about. All right, so all of the business stuff aside, now we're going to be talking about Off-White, but again in two parts. So because it's such a monster of a brand and the man behind the madness as well is quite you know, interesting. He's given this incredible perspective to the generation of kids who, you know, were just involved in t-shirt culture and now have a taste for the finer things in life, who is Virgil Abloh. So part one is going to be, who is he? What has he done? Where has he come from? And why is he doing what he's doing? And the second chapter is going to be, what is Off-White? What does it stand for? And why you should give a shit? So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started by talking about the one, the only, the iconic Off-White and Mr. Virgil Abloh. All right, so to kick off part one as to who Virgil Abloh is, we're gonna go ahead and just lay down some fundamental information, that way you're able to build on that. So he was born in 1980 in Chicago, his parents are both from Ghana, and he went to elementary school, middle school, high school, you know, typical growing up story in Chicago, before he went and got his bachelor's degree in civil engineering from the University of Wisconsin-Madison in 2002. But after having studied engineering, he had an affinity to learn more about architecture, but not so much about building buildings, so to speak. He wanted to understand how to build an idea out. He wanted to understand design. So he went on to get his master's from the Illinois Institute of Technology in Architecture a couple of years later. So after getting his master's degree, he went on to work at an architectural firm for two years before turning his attention to fashion. That's when in 2009, he founded one of the most landmarked galleries both for art and menswear in Chicago called RSVP Gallery and started working a little bit closer with Kanye West. So it was around this time that he connected with Kanye and started working for him as a creative director at his creative agency called Donda and from there Kanye and Virgil worked together to create um, set structures and concert merchandise so that's where Virgil started really to hone in on this more music part within the fashion industry and in terms of like creating and set designing and all of those things that he studied and wanted to do in school but didn't have the creative outlet for at the time. So everything was going well from 2009 to 2011 when he started to work with Jay-Z and Kanye on their Watch the Throne album which got him nominated for the Grammy Awards for Best Recording Package. So that's when his ideas, his creative direction, his vision for design really came to the spotlight and he utilized that momentum to get running with his projects, with his ideas, and collaborating with his peers. That's when in 2012 he launched his project called Pyrex Vision. You can see a lot of ties between that project and Off-White now and that's a huge milestone within Virgil's career because Pyrex Vision was his ability to try his hand at something that he hadn't done before. He knew that he wanted to get into clothing, hence why he opened up RSVP Gallery. This was his first opportunity to really create a brand to a degree, but he never really thought of it as a clothing brand. He thought of it more as just an experiment, right? So. He wanted to take things that he valued in his community, this whole streetwear aesthetic that's built out of necessity for something that you can't afford, don't have resources to, don't have access to, so and so forth. So Pyrex Vision was basically using champion t-shirts and dead stock Ralph Lauren rugby polos and just doing screen prints on them. And like I said, he never really had this be something that he wanted to blow out a lot. He wanted it to just be the first domino to cause the effect of success that eventually led him to Off-White, which obviously didn't know at the time, but he knew that he had to get all of his bad ideas out. I know this because in his Columbia speech back in February of 2017, he really touched up on what Pyrex vision meant to him, to his success, and what that means for other creatives who are looking to capitalize on opportunity as well. Pyrex vision was the first domino to fall that allowed him to eventually partner with um, Matthew Williams, Kanye West, and her own Preston and Ben Trill, which was more just to like mess around to try something kind of fun and ironic because it was 
raunchy and scrappy and didn't put too much thought into it. It wasn't about the quality, it was more just to be like a little bit of a laughing stock, but intentionally. So they made their success with that. If you want to go ahead and learn a little bit more about Ben Trill, in my video that I talked about Alinx Matthew Williams, who is the founder of Alinx, who works closely with Virgil on his Ben Trill project, talk about it a little bit more there. So kind of dialing it back into the fact that he never really had a strong vision for Pyrex Vision. He shut down the operation a year later in 2013 so he could really devote his time and energy into building out his now iconic brand, Off-White. So several years later, several collections later, several international stores opening later, Virgil has really built up the momentum that he got from being nominated for that Grammy Award, having worked with Jay-Z and Kanye, and his brand Off-White has taken off and has skyrocketed in terms of sales and acceptance among the community. So much so that it got recognition from Nike and allowed him to reinvent the 10 like top most classic silhouettes of the company that really solidified his godly status within not only the streetwear industry, but within this modern time of fashion as we know it. But he didn't stop with a brand or a concept that he knew and loved, like sneakers and Nike. He always is one to push the boundaries because not only does he not like to get too comfortable doing any one thing that he's good at, it's more so about continuing to try and test himself and see what other opportunity there is to do something creative and that is not textbook. He likes to go off the beaten path and find and discover new and fun things. You know, he's writing the rules as he goes and I think that's a really big component not only to the off-white concept but to who he is as an individual creative as well. And building on that mentality, he's therefore been able to accept a whole bunch of different collaborations that traditional fashion designers or streetwear designers haven't thought of doing before. He's worked a lot with Takashi Murakami who's a famous Japanese artist and then he's also recently collaborated with Ikea you know last year in 2017 they sent some pictures out about a rug sample and so all of those things are really coming to light and I know that those products will be dropping sometime in 2018 so he's really testing his bounds as to what he does well and how he can maximize his creative resources and skills with those of larger companies like Nike and like Ikea. And then a little bit more recent news, Virgil has become um, a costume designer for the New York City Ballet, which is an incredibly prestigious institution for the art of dance and ballet in particular, which is also unexpected. And also in 2019, he is actually going to be having a solo exhibit at Chicago's Museum of Contemporary Art, which is a huge milestone and especially hits home for him considering Chicago is his hometown. But now, moving on to part two, what is Off-White and why does everyone care so much? So first and foremost, why does the brand have the name Off-White? It's kind of the gradient or the spectrum between black, white, and then gray, which is obviously the in-between zone. So he also strongly believes that you shouldn't be any one of two things. There's a whole middle ground that you can be and have parts of both worked into it. So that's the main idea behind Off-White. And it doesn't have any inherent meaning apart from defining the area in between black and white, but also becomes this blank canvas for him to give meaning to through his collections, very similar to OAMC, which I've talked about before as well in another video, where the acronym OAMC actually changes every single time uh, based on the collections that they do. You know, this most recent um, fall winter 2018 collection that they had stood for once a mother's child. Make of that what you will, but it's a very similar concept where as time goes on, you can give new meaning to it. And another really important point as to why not only Off-White is named Off-White, but the logic behind naming the brand Off-White is that Virgil really likes to play with irony. He thinks that is the gateway drug into creativity in the 21st century. And so these kind of tongue in cheek um, things that he does and expressions that he uses all kind of contributes to this modern way of creating something that talks about serious subject matter, but in a digestible, easily accepted way. For example, his use of quotations too is ironic because it's like as you're saying something or as you're typing something, the use of quotation marks is not needed and grammatically incorrect unless you're quoting something, someone else, so on and so forth. So that's where the irony comes into play. It's because you're commenting on what you're currently doing. So it's almost like past tense in present tense and also thinking about the future as well as to what that could look like and what it would potentially be called. Sculpture is seen as on a lot of his bags and 
boot made for walking kind of thing. For walking, I think, is actually on the shoes themselves. So using the quotation marks with the given word contributes to the incredible complexity, the simplicity of the message. That is, irony is the best way to deliver creativity for Virgil. So street word to Virgil goes beyond the negatively connotated word that you hear and probably use yourself as well that society is given definition to by socioeconomic status, right? So street word to a lot of people means low quality, it's like low end, screen printed t-shirts and hoodies and things that you wear to skate around to completely destroy and thrash and then have to replace a couple days later. So when he was first starting off-white, he would often be associated with that word and would try and back away from it because he wanted to be associated with luxury, couture finishings, high fashion, luck it'll true luxury item and brand. But then with time, after continually being associated with streetwear, he came back around to embrace it and redefine it beyond socioeconomic boundaries of what a certain individual is capable of possessing and not possessing. To him, streetwear goes more along the lines of the resources that any one individual has at their disposal and absolutely maximizing their potential with those resources by being creative and forward thinking. And that is not only what Virgil has done for Off-White and his personal brand, but that is what he's given back to the streetwear community and has elevated it from being, you know, on the bottom of the totem pole in terms of fashion to really elevating it to be this high-end streetwear category that a lot of us know and love today because of Virgil's work and what he's done. So apart from elevating streetwear, the other two things that Virgil and Off-White are both really known for are collaborating. As we've talked about, he did everything with Ben Trill and Kanye even before that, but now, now that he's an established um, professional and creative, he's done work with Ikea and Murakami, all of the people that we talked about before, and doing those collaborations just broadens his scope, it broadens his audience, and broadens his ability to create. Last but not least, he has redefined what it means to be an individual and to be a designer. You no longer, not that you ever had to, but now you really don't have to believe that you need to come from a lineage of designers or creative thinkers in order to be a designer or a creative thinker. You can have all of those things and have no connection to the world whatsoever, financially or through networks. If you have the passion inside you, you will attract the right people to you to be able to flourish and create and get to the status, if not further, that Virgil has accomplished in his own life and career. That's all that I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed that really boiled down um, summary of what Virgil stands for and what his brand stands for and how the two of them work together to create change within the fashion industry. Go ahead and leave a comment down below with any links that you have found like really great interviews with Virgil. I'm gonna go ahead and link down in the description the talk that he did at Columbia along with some other articles. And as always, go ahead and leave some more brands that you want some videos on. I'm happy to add them to my growing list. I have some really, really excited ones and a special collaboration with one of my own friends that I'll be sharing with you guys soon on a brand that I've been wanting to do a video on forever. So with that, go ahead, like, subscribe, and definitely keep up with me on social media for Twitter and Instagram. Those are my best too, because that's where I'll post when I throw up a new video and new content. So definitely follow me at the Sugar Woman on those two. And I'll see you again next time. Thanks guys. Sugar Woman out. Thank <laughs> you.